Greetings from Ukraine. My name is Chip Taylor. I have a small farm here in southwestern Ukraine where we do some market gardening, um, selling to some of the local restaurants and um, different social entities. And we do chickens just for eggs. And the thing I wanted to talk to you about this morning um, is barley sprouts and it's tremendously cut our feed cost. And it's pretty simple. Some of you have asked me questions about it, and so I thought I'd just walk you through the process. And what I do first to start off, um, we've got just plain barley straight out of the bag. And what I do is I measure out two kilos of barley. That's 4.4 pounds. Put it in these um, 10 by 20 um, trays that are used for um, nurseries. And you can see I've got a collection of these guys. And so um, what I do first, even before I measure out the barley, is I put it in bleach. Because I want to make sure that we don't have any kind of um, infection from mold, anything like that. So we bleach these trays, we bleach them quite often. Then, the first I measure it out, two pounds, or two kilos, and then I am soaking it 24 hours in three quarts of water, and I'll show you what I use to measure the water in a second. Three quarts of water, plus I take four um, capfuls of regular bleach, household bleach. Mix that in and then soak the um, seeds overnight. What I'm trying to do again is to kill off any kind of um, mold, bacteria, that kind of stuff. And so for the first 24 hours, it soaks in the bleach. And then I drain that out. This is what it looks like the first day. It's just been drained out and it's going to sit for a few hours. I'm going to water it. Um, and I'll show you how I do that, but I water it um, at 6 a.m., 12 a.m., or 12 p.m., and then again at 6 p.m. So three times a day I'm soaking this stuff, and I'll show you how I do that. But the first day, I'm trying to handle the camera and show you this at the same time. This is my first day. This is after um, being soaked and after being drained. And this is the first day, and you might be able to see a little bit of sprouting going on here. And then the second day, a little bit more sprouting. Every now and then, there's, well, you're going to see the roots, but you might be able to see a sprout or two coming up and out. This is day three, after being soaked. And then we come over here. And you can see we've got good sprouts appearing. Everybody's germinated. And then it comes to this. And to this. And then finally to this. And then this is um, after nine days. So I'll go back to it one more time. Day one, we measure it out, soak it for 24 hours. So that's day one. Day two, day three, day four, day five, Day six, day seven, day eight, day nine. You can see it from the side how tall this stuff should be. Okay, now this is pretty tall, pretty thick. Now I started off with two point 
Well, I started off with two kilos, 4.4 pounds. But on day nine, and I weigh this stuff every day, but on day nine, this stuff this morning weighed 7.6 kilos. So from two kilos to 7.6 kilos, almost quadrupled. And what I've got is a rack where I put this stuff. And the rack, because it's still cold here, the rack is backed up against my thermal mass um, masonry furnace. And so we keep it pretty toasty in here. Um, I've got a thermometer that I'll show you, but I assume it's about 80 degrees in this room. And that, the reason behind that is that I'm also sprouting um, tomato seeds, peppers, um, different vegetables to go on the ground. This is also my nursery. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, now, so that's why I set everything up. Um, bleach my trays first, bleach um, trays anytime I empty them. Before I use them, after I use them, everything's been bleached. And I wanted to show you how I water this stuff. It's pretty basic. If I can do it and not drop anything. I don't know if I can do that and not drop anything. I'm going to set the camera down for just a second. All right, now, what I'm doing... That's three quarts of water. Move it around a little bit. Now this tray soaked in bleach last night. Now what I'm doing now is actually two trays. 4.4 kilos now, double production. When I got a new batch of chickens, I gotta increase the amount of feed. And you can see, this is completely submerged, and I am letting it drain into this tub here. Now, I don't waste any water. This tub will go to the pigs um, after um, I've done a day's worth of water. And so none of this, um, water is wasted. Then, the last thing I wanted to show you, well, let's do this first. All of these trays are set up where they're leaning, and so they're completely draining out into the bottom tray, into the next tray, into the next tray, into the next tray. The next tray. And so once, um, but I still go through and I submerge everything. I just didn't want water to be wasted. I didn't want water to be dripping out onto the floor. At the bottom, I've got a couple of um, empty trays to catch whatever is not absorbed by um, these other trays draining. Now, I want to show you this. This is what the sprouts look like after they have been in here for nine days. And I'll just turn this over. Show you how easy it is to get it out of the tray. Now this, again, I'm going to bleach this now, but this is what you get. And my girls eat the, the sprout, the roots, everything. But I'm going to cut this up like a piece of cake. And you can see it's thick. So that's what you get. And you get a pretty solid piece of food. And what's happened with the sprouting process is not only have you increased mass, um, when you feed a chicken just regular old barley, here's some seeds that did not germinate. Some of them are starting to germinate now for whatever reason. But when you feed um, a chicken, barley. They can only absorb 40% of the nutrients and vitamins and that kind of stuff that are contained within the barley. 
when you sprout it, the actual sprouting process releases those nutrients, puts it in a usable form, better than just grinding it. And um, now the animal has access to 80% of the vitamins and nutrients that are available in the barley. So not only have you quadrupled the amount of food that you have, you have increased by 80% the amount of food, or increased from 40% to 80%, how much um, nutrition the animal can actually get from the barley. All right. I'm sure there's something else. If you have any questions, um, put it in the comment. If you have any, anything else you'd like to see, like hear about, let me know. You want to know about chickens, you want to know about barley, you want to know about other sprouts, because I do, um, I do wheat some, you know, barley's not always available, and so I, I will do wheat on occasion. I don't do corn, um, corn's just too slow. Um, I need something that's quicker. This stuff will actually increase in um, production as the temperatures get warmer. And yesterday it was warm enough that we could actually put this stuff outside and let it absorb some of the sunlight. But you see, I've got um, some fluorescent light. The light is not the important part. The temperature is the important part. If you think about it, to germinate a seed, the seed's in the ground when it's you know in nature's process. The seed's in the ground sprouting. It doesn't have access to light. And so it has a necessity for a certain amount of moisture, a certain amount of temperature. And so what we're doing, we can do this basically without any kind of um, sunlight at all, no grow lights. Um, those things would possibly increase um, the amount of, um, or decrease the amount of time that it would actually take to sprout these things. But for us, you know, living in Ukraine, it's cloudy. We have a zero um, UV index almost every day. And so relying upon the sunlight was not a possibility. Relying upon grow lights, grow lights are just not exactly um, available. And so um, what we're using is what we got. And so the ambient light coming in from the sun is been plenty for us and we've been able to do this now um, before the first of the year we were um, producing 60 kilos of sprout every day we changed things a little bit um, had to move into this room this is actually inside my um, rehabilitation center for alcoholics and um, soldiers suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder um, we have a limited ability um, to keep things warm um, being here in Ukraine. And so this is one of two rooms that actually had the furnace in it and we were able to keep a pretty good temperature, consistent temperature in here. When it gets cold, that's one of the things you need to know, that um, the mold is more likely to be produced when it's um, colder temperature. So we keep things pretty warm. Um, we keep things ventilated. I've got windows on both sides. We open up the windows, let the air move through. I don't set fans up. Um, we get enough of a breeze just by having the windows open. Fans would be a good idea if it's a, a sealed up room. Ventilation's important, temperature's important. Um, barley's good in colder um, temperatures, um, colder being upper 60s, lower 70s. It doesn't have to be 80 degrees the way that I keep it in here, but the 80 degrees is for um, some of the other plants um, anyway. All right, now I'm going to cut this up into smaller pieces that are a little bit more manageable by the chickens. Um, some people recommend one by one squares. I don't quite do it that much, but we're going to chop it up and feed it to the chickens and um, along with some regular barley seed and some corn. It's not just barley that they're eating right now. We're trying to um, um, make sure that they're well-rounded in their feed so we're not feeding straight up barley sprouts at the moment. 
Um, also, they're getting sunflower cake. Um, they, it's what's left over from the process of producing sunflower oil. After they've gone through that process, they compact the cakes and we feed that to them. That gives us our protein. That's like 40% protein. The chickens need at least 18%. And so we add in um, the sunflower in order to boost that um, protein. Got any questions, put them in the comments. If you like what you saw and can use it, like it, share it with your friends. There is a website, Ukrainian Recovery Resources, that explains a little bit more about what we do over here as far as psychology is concerned. I've got some crops coming up. Um, the garlic's up. The radishes are starting to come up. Um, I've got some spinach that I am sprouting or um, that I put in um, seed trays. We're going to transplant that stuff probably another week. And then I'll show you what we're doing with that. Um, tomatoes are germinating, beginning to come up. We're going to plant those in the ground um, probably mid-April. Um, the land that I've got for the tomatoes, is all, the beds have already been prepped. They're under tarps right now to kill off um, the weeds. And as soon as I pull the tarps off, as soon as my um, tomatoes are big enough, we're going to transplant them out. I'll show you all of that. Um, if you have any other questions, just let me know and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Peace.